All right, so in this video, we'll be talking about units and dimensions. So whenever you take a measurement, your measurement has units, and that's whatever you're measuring in. All right, so if you're measuring, let's say, distance, then your units might be four inches, or meters, the metric system, kilometers, whatever. Okay. So let's say you're measuring a volume, then you might be using liters, or cups, gallons, what have you. Okay, so then the dimensions of your measurement are, you know, the type or category of your measurement. Right, so types or classes of measurement. Okay, and so I just gave you two examples of that. Right, we have you know, distance is a type of dimension, and you measure a dimension in different units. Okay, so there's distances, volume, you know, there's time, which would be measured in seconds or hours, would be your units. You know, there's mass, you need uh, units of grams. You know, you could have density, you know, or, or numbers of cells, you know, in our bacteria examples anything you want. And within a dimension, right, so uh, within a dimension, you know, if you measure something in feet, you can convert it pretty easily to inches or meters or miles or whatever, right? So you can convert between different units of the same dimension, of the same dimension, with pretty basic identity. Right, or just some sort of proportionality constant get between the two of them. Okay, start with some examples. Right, there are, you know, in a mile you have 5,280 feet. Right, in a foot there's 12 inches. In an inch you have 2.54 centimeters. Okay, so you can ask, you know, how many centimeters are in a mile? Okay, so to do that, we'll need to convert from centimeters to miles. And we take these, you know, fundamental basic identities here, and we can turn these into conversion factors by just manipulating these equations a little. So if we divide this first equation by a mile, we'll be left with one on the left, as we cross out the miles, so miles, so if I divide by a mile on both sides of the equation, miles, then I'm left with one on the left and 5280 feet a mile on the right. Okay? Because the miles, you know, these cancel with each other. Okay? So then here's a conversion factor that turns miles into feet. You can get the same thing for the other two, right? I can have uh, one is equal to 12 inches feet, and I can have one is equal to 2.54 centimeters per inch. Okay, so if I wanna know how many centimeters are in a mile, I can start with one mile, and then I say, okay, well, a mile is equal to a mile times one, one, times one, right? Every time I multiply by one, I'm not changing the value of one mile. So then I want to use these conversion factors to replace these ones. And that'll let me replace miles with centimeters. So I'll start off by saying, okay, let's replace the first mile, or the first one, with 5280 feet per mile, right? Since 5280 feet per mile is equal to one by this equation up here. Then I can replace the second one with 12 inches per foot. And I can replace the third one with 2.54 centimeters per inch. Okay? And then I can multiply this thing through. Let me do numbers. Okay. If I multiply 1 by 5280 by 12 times 2.54, I end up with 160, 934 centimeters. 
you end up with 160.934. Getting ahead of myself there. And then we check the units, right? Miles cancels with miles. Feet cancels with feet. Inches cancels with inches. So we're left with centimeters. So we're left with 160.934 centimeters. So we multiply all the numbers through and we cancel out units until we are left with what we wanted. So that tells you how many centimeters for a mile. Okay. We can do the same thing with you know areas or, or more complicated measurements. Let's say you want to rent an apartment and you're fine looking around and you find one with 2030 square feet. Right? So feet squared or square foot times a foot. Right? Each side length is feet. Okay. So let's say you find an apartment, it's 2030 square feet, but you're from Europe, so you don't know what that means. So you say, okay, well, how many square meters is that? And that'll get a good sense of whether or not that's a big apartment. Okay. So again, we want to start with a basic relationship. Okay. We start with, let's say, there are uh, 0 0.3048 meters in a foot. Okay, let's manipulate this by dividing by feet. That tells us that there are 3048 meters in a foot, and that's equal to 1. So if I start with, you know, 2030 feet squared, well, that's 2030 feet squared times 1. 1, since we want to get rid of 2 of these feet. Right, so that gives us 2030 feet by feet. Right, and we replace this one with this conversion factor 0 0.0348 meters per feet. And that will cancel out one of these feet, but we need to cancel the other foot. So we have to multiply by this factor again 48 meters. Right, so we're replacing this one with this conversion factor replacing the second one with the other conversion. So we have 2030 feet squared times this conversion factor, which turns one meter into one foot, and this conversion factor, which turns the other meter into a foot. Okay? So then if we multiply this out, we're left with, we multiply the numbers, we get 188.6, and now we check our units. So this foot cancels with that foot, this foot cancels with that foot, and we're left with two of these meters. So we multiply those together, we end up with meters squared, which is what we wanted, right? We wanted to convert square footage to square meter. Okay. So what about now if we wanted to convert between dimensions? This comes up more often than not. Let's start with an example that we've we've seen before. I think we did this in the combining functions video, where we measured, let's say we measured the mass of a single bacteria cell of a single cell, right? We called it mu, and we counted the number of bacteria the number of cells, and we call that population, and we want to know what's the total mass. All right, so here we're converting between dimensions, because the dimensions of mass of a single cell would be mass per cell. Dimensions of number of cells would be cells, right, or numbers of cells. And the dimensions that we want are just the mass. All right, and so you can kind of see that in order to get total mass, we just need to multiply these two together, right? So if we call total mass m, we multiply mu times p, then, you know, in terms of dimensions, we'll get mass over cell times cells, which will give us a mass, which is what we want, okay? And so let's say we actually had um, some real measurements here. So let's say we knew that the uh, mass of a single cell 
was 3.1 times 10 to the minus 9 grams. So, right, so very tiny. And let's say we counted T equals 2.0 times 10 to the fifth cells. Okay? So then if you want to compute the mass, that's M equals U times T. That's 3.1 times 10 to the minus 9 grams. Cells times 2.0 times 10 to the 5th cells. We multiply these together and we check our unit. Right, so the numbers together give us 6.2 times 10 to the minus 4. And if we check our units, grams will not cancel with anything, but cell will cancel with cell. So we'll be left with grams. So that gives us our final answer. The total mass M is 6.2 times 10 to the minus 4 grams which are the right units. So every time we're converting between units or dimensions, you want to make sure that things are canceling out properly on top of making sure you do kind of the calculation right with the number. Okay? So in general, to convert between dimensions, we're going to need special formulas. Right? There used to be formulas like mass is equal to per individual mass times number of individuals. It could be knowing that mass is density times volume. It can mean knowing uh, different geometries, so knowing you know how to convert between radius and volume for spheres and whatnot. Um, and so I'll give you a table in a second. But in general, to convert between dimensions, you'll need a formula. Okay, so the book has a nice list of formulas that we'll use lots in this class. Here, and I'll post this later too. So we have, you know, different geometries. So you know, volume of the sphere, surface area of the sphere, area of the circle, perimeter of the circle. You know, you should know, you know, cubes and squares, and relations involving mass here. Okay, so let's do let's do one last problem. Let's say we had a sphere of liquid drop liquid and we know its density and its volume or not its volume but its radius okay and we want to know what its total mass is okay so let's say we know its density right and its radius and we want to know the mass of the density Let's say this is a drop of mercury, so it has a density of 13.58 grams per centimeters cubed. And let's say the radius is r equals 0.23 centimeters. Okay, so we put this like on a nice little grid. We measure the radius, and we know its density because we're chemists. Or something. Okay, let's check our dimension. Right, the dimensions of this are mass divided by a volume. Okay, dimensions of our radius though are distance. So we can't right away just multiply these two together to get what we want, right? We want a total mass. We have a mass sitting here, so how do we get it from these two relationships, right? If we want mass and we have, you know, a mass per volume, then we want to multiply by a volume, right? then those will cancel and be left with a mass. Okay, and so that's exactly this formula here, right? Mass is equal to density times volume. Right? So that's saying M is equal to rho times B. Okay, but we don't have B, we have the radius. But we know the geometry of our problem, right? We know it's a sphere. So we have to go back and look for the volume of the sphere or look it up on the internet. And we say, okay, the volume of the sphere 4 thirds pi r cubed. We can use that to get our volume. So we know that volume C is equal to 4 thirds pi cubed. Okay? So for our problem, we have 4 thirds pi, and our radius is 0.23 centimeters. 0.2 centimeters cubed. And that gives us 
we do this out, we get 0 0.051 times height. And this is a unit of volume. Dimensions of this is now volume, which is good. So now that we have the volume in terms of the radius, now we can compute the total mass by multiplying the density and the volume together. All right, so we have n equals rho e, now going to be 13.58 grams over centimeters cubed, number four, right? That's the density of a drop of liquid, times 0 0.051 centimeters cubed from our volume calculation. Okay, so then our final answer is we multiply those numbers together, we end up with 0 0.63, and now we check our unit. Grams doesn't cancel with anything. Centimeters cubed are going to cancel with centimeters. So we're left with grams, which made sense because we were looking for a mass. Okay? So that's the general process when you're trying to convert between units and dimensions. All right?